I've got so many places I want to be. Things I want to see and do. But no idea how to get there quickly. There are only so many hours in a day. How am I supposed to know how to get to all these places in the best way? We can help you find the shortest route. We know that planning routes can be very difficult, but we're here to help. How is this possible? By looking at the travelling salesman problem. Let us explain. Imagine that there's a salesman. They need to travel to multiple locations and they want to do it in the shortest possible route. The problem is simply finding the best route to visit multiple locations and return to the starting point. We can find the number of possible routes. We do this by taking all the locations we want to visit, say A, B, C and D. If we start at A, there is three possible routes for us to take. Say we choose to travel to B. We then have two choices of where to go next, C or D. If we travel to C, it leaves just one route left, to D. We have now visited all destinations and can find the number of possible routes by multiplying the amount of choices we had at each point. There is 3 times 2 times 1 possible routes, therefore there are 6 different paths. That makes sense, but what if there are more points? Won't it get very complicated? It can, yes. So we use graphs to simplify the problem. Take our graph here. The lines connecting two points are called edges, and the points themselves are called vertexes. We can weight each edge with the distance of time, etc. And these are the values that we use in our calculations. With graphs, we also have trees. And no, we don't mean that type of tree. A tree is a graph where there is a path along the edges from every vertex to every other vertex, i.e. you can reach every vertex on this path. A tree cannot contain any cycles. You can think of these as loops between vertices where the beginning and end node is connected. First, we will find a lower bound. This is the lowest possible value that the optimum route could be. Before we can find a lower bound, it is important you know what a minimum spanning tree is. Recall our graph from our last example. Here are all the possible routes to each vertex. A minimum spanning tree is simply the shortest or lowest weight path that connects all the vertices. Understand so far? Yes. But how do you find the spanning tree for more complicated graphs where you can't just observe the minimum spanning tree? We can find the minimum spanning tree using Prime's algorithm. Although this sounds complicated, it is rather simple. We choose a starting vertex and then choose the shortest connecting edge. We now choose the shortest edge from both our vertices and repeat this until all vertices have been visited. This is the result from our graph. In this case, the weight of our minimum spanning tree is 7. Now we can start finding a lower bound. Revert back to our spanning tree. To find the lower bound, we must remove a vertex of choice and the edges associated with it, creating a subgraph. We now find the minimum spanning tree for this subgraph. However, this is already a minimum spanning tree. So the weight of the minimum spanning tree of this subgraph is 5. We now re-add the vertex that we removed along with the two shortest edges connected to it. These two edges have a weight of 5. This allows us to calculate our lower bound. Take the weight of our spanning tree for the subgraph plus the weight of these two shortest edges. Hence, our lower bound is 10. What would happen if I wanted to find the highest value that the optimum route could take? To find an upper bound, we use the nearest neighbour algorithm. 
we simply choose a vertex and travel to its nearest neighbour. We repeat this until all the vertices have been visited and then return to our starting vertex. As you can see, this method gives us an upper bound of 10. So to recap, when finding the lower bound of a root, you must find the minimum spanning tree after removing a vertex, and then add the two shortest edges connecting this removed vertex. And to find the upper bound, we can simply use the nearest neighbour algorithm. In general, the quickest route will lie between the lower and upper bounds. Happy travelling!